Good evening and thank you for joining me. This is Andy Yegudev here with the weather and I will be giving a forecast for the next two weeks. But before we get started, I would like you to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you will be updated whenever a new video is uploaded and to like the video and share it with your friends and family. Now we get started. So I will begin the video by looking at the temperature anomaly for the United States. And right now, it seems that there's a big area of pretty below average temperatures in the central United States. The East Coast right now is running several degrees above normal. In fact, New York City today was under a heat advisory and we had a line of storms that moved through but my area didn't get anything. There was actually storms to the northern part of Queens County and the southern part, and I was actually caught in the middle and didn't get anything. And here to the right is the color bar uh, and shows a temperature graph right here. So it's a color-coded temperature graph. Um, so blue right here, there's some purple here, some lighter pink here. That's up to 12 degrees below normal. And there's some red in New York that's running up to 10 to 8 to 12 degrees above normal. While here around uh, James Bay, temperatures are running up to 12 to 14 degrees above normal. And now as we go up, go ahead, we will see that there's going to be a cool down across the central part of the United States and then it will move eastward. And now the eastern two thirds of the country are running five to 10 degrees below normal, especially areas where you have some pinks that's running pretty cold here while the West Coast is gonna start warming up. So while the East Coast cold, while the, <clears throat> while the East Coast cools down, the West Coast will begin heating up again. And then pieces of this heat will move into the Central and Eastern United States and then it will be followed by more reinforcing shots of cooler air. And tropical activity right now... And then there'll be another significant cool down um, in about a one to two weeks time. So as we look towards August, uh, actually September 4th, as we look towards the first week of September, a very, very strong cold blast is developing. Temperatures running up to almost 16 degrees below normal. And looking at this right here, and let's look at surface temperatures. And looking at surface temperatures in the 40s, and this is daytime temperatures in the 40s. That is very abnormal. I mean, this is only the first week of September and already it's running well below normal. And as we scroll back, there, there's evidence of re reinforcing shots of cooler air coming into the United States. But even though we're going to have reinforcing shots of cooler air, they're not going to last long. I think Wednesday may be um, the last good day in, in the Northeast, and then everything's just going to go downhill again. Because look at this. Monday is going to be in the 90s. Tuesday in the 90s, Wednesday in the 90s, but then Thursday, I think this may be the last day. So let's go back to two meter uh, temperature anomalies. So while the central United States will be cool, the East Coast is still gonna be sizzling. It's still gonna be really hot. In fact, you see this right here? Those are heat islands right here. That's, that's the Philadelphia heat island, the New York heat island, the DC and the Baltimore heat island. And that's the Hartford heat island. So then as we're going to go ahead, this is going to be Thursday afternoon. Look at that. These coasts are still clinging to all that heat. And there's also going to be a chance of some pretty intense thunderstorms. So Thursday afternoon, there's going to be some really intense thunderstorms as that cool blast comes in. And um, we look ahead. It's going to get pretty quiet. It's going to be pretty good. The weather's going to be pretty good. We had some pretty intense thunderstorms come through uh, earlier today, as I said, but they missed my area. So 
This is the last chance uh, to have rain in New York for a while. So and there might be some more tomorrow, but unlikely. But I think Wednesday and Thursday, so Wednesday afternoon, there might be a chance of some severe weather. And now I'm going to change gears and go to uh, weather.cause.edu. This is a very important model run that I use because it has various products, such as Supercell Composite, Cape, a most unstable Cape. This is what I use uh, to determine if there's going to be a severe weather outbreak or if there's going to be thunderstorms, will they be severe? So Wednesday afternoon, Thursday. So there's likelihood of going to be a severe weather outbreak in um, Illinois on Wednesday. So Wednesday, severe storms are likely here. This is showing how unstable the, uh, the air is, showing very unstable values. Um, showing those values are very high up there. And looking Wednesday afternoon, um, doesn't look like much, but with K values that high, there's a very high threat of large destructive hail and strong damaging winds. And yeah, see those storms coming in. So looking at Supercell Composite uh, for that day. Doesn't look like a tornado outbreak, but there's definitely going to be severe weather. So Thursday afternoon, thunderstorms possible in the northeast. Um, and also some more storms tomorrow. Just, just you know, garden variety storms, you know, summer thunderstorms. Nothing too impressive like we had today, because today it was a, with a cold front. Tomorrow is just with... Uh, in unstable summer air and Wednesday there's gonna be some more thunderstorms this, this is me part of a passing system so storms on Wednesday could be a little bit more intense maybe some small hail and gusty winds and Thursday this is this is where it could get very interesting on Thursday we might have an outbreak of severe storms possibly on Thursday Because there's going to be a cold front coming through, a very sharp one. So this could touch off some very intense thunderstorms uh, with strong damaging winds and large hail. And Wednesday afternoon, there's going to be some storms uh, just to the north of New York City. So right now I'm checking out convective precipitation to see if those are going to be thunderstorms or just some regular rain. So yeah, there's definitely going to be a chance of some very intense storms north of New York City. Um, Nam Nest is going to check. Out, uh, it's going to show um, high definition storms, which means if there's any storms or any of them, it's going to show up here. So not much tomorrow. It's going to be mostly in Pennsylvania. Maybe a couple of renegade storms might enter New Jersey. But Wednesday, this is. There could be some morning showers and thunder showers in New York City, but then the afternoon kicks off, and guess what? There might be some storms in the New York City area. Check that out. So Wednesday could be interesting. We have some strong storms Wednesday, and then Thursday seems to be even more interesting. So this is a cold front right here. So right here is a cold front. You see those northwest winds and the west wind, westerly winds here. So Wednesday to Thursday could be very interesting for the northeast, especially Thursday. Uh, I'm not so concerned about Wednesday as I am for Thursday. Because Wednesday is going to be warm. It's going to be in the mid-80s. But Thursday, see that sharp contrast right here between very warm and very cool temperatures? That's when you could have some very dangerous storms. So Thursday afternoon, there's going to be a chance of some strong thunderstorms coming through. And though these are the storms right here. So, and looking at supercell composite, so I want to check Cape first. This is very important to see if there's going to be severe storms or not. There were a lot of strong thunderstorms here in southern New Jersey today, and I wasn't, and I'm not surprised why. Uh, most of the strongest storms were to the south. And now looking at the NAM for Wednesday showing um, some pretty strong convection. 
here it's less convection because of cloud cover from all those storms. So while there's convection, not enough for severe storms. But Thursday, not that severe, but if this just comes a little further north, there could be a very dangerous severe weather outbreak with large hail, damaging winds. No tornadoes. I'm not anticipating any tornadoes, but damaging winds and hail, definitely a possibility. So there could be a couple of uh, supercells tomorrow because there's a supercell composite index for tomorrow. And looking at Thursday, wow, it's actually showing Wednesday to be more dangerous, which is a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to check this out again. And yeah, there's a little supercell there, right there. See the little black line there? Looking at updraft helicity swaths. Yeah, not much, so not that concerned. And let's look at surface temperatures for the next several days on the NAM. Mid 80s, mid to upper 80s for Tuesday. Wednesday it looks like it will be high 80s, low 90s, and Thursday afternoon high 80s. So there's definitely a threat of some strong thunderstorms. Nothing tornadic, but definitely a chance of strong and severe storms. And now looking at the tropics. And then I'll load it. Uh, looking at the tropics right now, there is this tropical disturbance which has almost no chance of developing uh, yeah. the National Hurricane Center didn't even put a five-day outlook on it so no. as you can see the conditions are going to get very hostile for development and looking all the way to the first week of September there's still nothing there I mean <laughs> I mean check this out I mean really it's like it's completely quiet the whole Atlantic is just, just quiet. And I'm going to go to spaghetti models right now just to check if they put a five-day uh, forecast item. Look, nothing. There is nothing out there. It's, it's really quiet. So, I didn't even know why they put this out here. We didn't get any, I didn't get any storms. I got missed. Looking right now at tropics, it's really quiet right now, so there's nothing to be concerned about with the tropics. And I mean, the only place that seems interesting is the West Coast. So finally, it all loaded, and looking right now at the GFS, there's a tropical system. On its heels, tropical moisture gets pulled inward, and there's a lot of rain in Arizona. Much needed rain, too. That's only one run. So this is looking at total precipitation accumulation. This is GEFS. As you can see right here, some of the remnants will go, well, it looks like it's mostly going to go up the east coast. Uh, up. Well, off the west coast of Baja, California. So, um, looks like there's not going to be much. Just, it's pretty good. Uh, we're going to look at sea surface temperature anomalies again. Because uh, today just came in. So, today's the 19th. And last day was the 15th. So, yep, there we go. Looking at, at SST anomalies. Very, very warm here. This is very scary. And look at here. I mean, look at all this warmth here. Looking at the 15th. See, it doesn't look that warm. As you can see here, it's only 3 to 4 degrees centigrade above normal. Let's go four days later. And it becomes 4 to 4.5. So, yeah, there's some areas of almost 5 degrees centigrade above normal. So now we'll be looking at the 19th. So right now... 
Looking okay, in the 19th, there's some very, very warm waters off of Labrador. Look at that. Like, that's 5 degrees centigrade above normal. That is, has to be 5 to 7 degrees Celsius above normal. Look at this. This is incredible. And only going back to the 15th, like, this area is becoming very warm. It's very warm here, very warm here. This is a very strong sign for snow this winter. So, looking here... The warmest I'm seeing is up to 4 degrees, between 3.5 and 4. And going to the 19th, to where we are right now, there's an area of 4 to 4.5. So, Or even, I think, there's one isolated 5 pocket. Right about here. And just going back 2 weeks, or actually 7 days, this is going back a week. Look at that, there's only a small patch right here. And then as we fast forward... Keep in mind, right around this area. And right now, this whole area is just one big warm blob. There's like, this whole area is like just blob of, blobs of warm water. It's incredible. It was a small blob, but I think some cooler waters here. It's not all red. Only red area is here. And now, it's encompassing this whole area and even down here going back a, whole, a week it's yellow a couple dots of orange even some dots of blue and right now it's more orange than anything else this is getting really bad and this is what's really concerning is if this is going to seep southward if this is going to seep southward, which I think it will, it's going to make for a very, very strong blocking pattern this winter, and maybe even early this hurricane season, or later this hurricane season, which will mean storms could start coming up the east coast. And that's a very strong concern. Also, the Atlantic is very warm. Um, we're having a La Nina starting to develop right now, so... This hurricane season looks to be really strong. And that's very concerning. Like, right now, there's the impact of the SAL. And there's cool waters right here right now. But it's warm all the way across the Atlantic. So, this winter looks to be pretty cold and snowy. Well, s snowy. Like, a lot of... Uh, there's going to be a trough. Uh, this winter will definitely be cold and snowy because of this. This pattern supports... Uh, ridges on the west coast and troughs on the east so we might have a year similar to 2014 2015. this looks very similar to 2014 2015. in fact it, or 20 uh 2011 2012 or 2012 2013 because at that time it was around uh, this time let's go around august 20th look how warm this whole area was just all this warm water. That's why Sandy hit the way it did. And the first week of August, it, you know, there was cool waters here, but then as we went towards October, November, the blob started, not the blob, but the, see that area, of that little sliver of warm water. I mean, <laughs> look how cool it is here, but, so you did have warm water here, so. And so by February of 2013, we had winter storm Nemo. You know, you had all, you know, the anomaly off the East Coast. So this winter looks to be another cold and snowy one. And if the anomaly can reform off the East Coast, we could end up getting another cold and snowy winter. So we're going to go back towards uh, 2011, uh, 2012, 2013, so August, right? Mm. About the same time as we are right now. Yep. Very warm waters here. So. And the anomaly began to form around October. This is when the anomaly began to form. And it really got itself started towards the middle of December. So that's what is really concerning. Also 2013-2014 was a snowy winter as well 
And around this time, in August 19th, and all this warm water over here. So as we got towards October and September, September and October, of course the cold air dissipated, and you, but you had the warm blob here, so which created a lot of blocking. Going towards November, it wasn't all cold, so you had warm here, warm here, and going towards the first week of December, Yep, it looks like this winter might be very cold and snowy. And the winter I would never forget is the winter of 2014-2015. That winter was more of the blob off of Alaska than it was in Labrador. But around this time, uh, around this time, warm blob, warm blob. So yeah, two areas of warmness. But around towards November, well, it was also warm. So. Towards the end of December. Yep, definitely indicative of a very cold and snowy winter. And how does it look right now? You ask me? Yeah. Just just watch that. If this gets colder and this gets warmer. A snowy winter will occur, and yeah, look at that. Looks like it might that might indeed happen, and this whole area might become one warm blob. If it's gonna be like that or anything crazy, you might have a crazy trough on the east coast, nothing but storms. So this is incredible. This right here is throwing my whole forecast off. Like I've never seen it so extreme. Like never. So. I have to wait until the winter, but my preliminary forecast, I'm making one right now. I'm going to make one in August, September, and October. But right now, my forecast for the East Coast, I'm calling for 50 to 60 inches of snow for New York City, 80 to 100 for Boston, and 100 plus for Maine, New Hampshire, and, and Vermont. The Mid-Atlantic will be a wintry battle zone. Uh, I don't expect too much snow for the mid for the southern mid-Atlantic states, but then as those storms start bombing out as they head northeastward, I expect a big thumping of snow for southern New England, northern New England, and Maine. So like north, northern New England will get a lot of snow, central and southern New England also. New York City, I think, is going to be more, moder more modest, 50 to 60 inches. I think a couple of those will be nor'easters, um, which will have some tropical connections or subtropical because of this. So you might have the sub um, the couple of Pacific Bay storms that might, or Gulf Bay storms that go up the coast. But also a lot of clipper bombs. You'll get those, cl those clipper systems that could come up, come off the East Coast and really blow up. Especially this blob is really impressive. Those clipper systems will be really strong as well because as they will go down, they'll have a lot of energy to work with because of this. So we might have some really powerful storms. If you have a clipper storm, especially a strong and powerful one that's really deep, the storm that will form off the East Coast could be really deep as well and bring a lot of snow and wind. Also look at ocean temperatures in the Gulf around this time in 2014. So if you remember the winter of 2014, 2015, around this time, the Gulf was warm, but, this is a big but, the Atlantic right now is very warm. And at that time, the Atlantic was also very warm. So very similar, actually not as warm, the Atlantic is warmer this year. So the fact that you're having a warmer Atlantic right now means that these storms could really pack a punch when they hit the East Coast. And it's going to be impressive how much snow could fall at the end of this year.
Well, thank you for watching and have a great night, everybody.